Why did Jesus pray to God if he is God? This is a question that many have asked. When we read the Gospels, we see Jesus often withdrawing to pray. For instance, in the book of Luke, we are told, but he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. Luke chapter 5, verse 16. If Jesus is God, isn't he engaging in conversation with himself? It's a fair and curious question that invites us to explore the depths of Jesus' humanity and his divine nature. There is one God who eternally exists as three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This doesn't mean there are three gods, but rather one God in three persons. Just as water can be ice, liquid, or steam and still be water, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and still one God. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all that I have said to you. John chapter 14, verses 26. Here Jesus speaks of the Holy Spirit as a distinct person, but sent from the Father and acting in Jesus' name, showing the unity and distinct roles within the Trinity. Now, within this understanding comes a question that has puzzled many. If Jesus is God, as part of the Trinity, why did he need to pray? This question goes to the heart of Jesus' earthly ministry and mission. Jesus, fully God and fully man, spent time in prayer. We will look at how his prayers reveal his relationship with the Father, fulfill his role on earth, and teach us about the nature of communication with God. Join us as we seek to understand the beautiful complexity of Jesus' prayers and what they mean for our own spiritual lives. The Nature of Jesus Jesus is someone extraordinary and unique because he is both God and a person like us at the same time. This means that Jesus is 100% God. He can do things only God can do, like special miracles and uniquely rescuing people. But he's also 100% human. He got hungry, felt hurt, and died. It's like having two complete sets of everything in one person. Imagine having all the superpowers, but also living a regular person, going through everything we go through, except he never did anything wrong. We believe this because it helps them understand how Jesus could do incredible things, but also know what it's like to be a person. The nature of Jesus is one of the central mysteries of faith. It is in understanding both his divinity and humanity he accomplished through his life, death, and resurrection. The Purpose of Jesus' Prayers model for humanity. Jesus showed us the best way to talk and live with God. Dependence on the Father. Jesus lived in a way that showed us he did nothing by his own will. He said, Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his Father doing, because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. John chapter 5 verse 19. This means Jesus waited for God to show him the way before he did anything. It's like how a child watches and learns from their parent and doesn't try to do things all on their own. And when things got really tough, right before he was to be taken away and put on the cross, Jesus prayed hard. He said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will but yours be done. Luke chapter 22 verse 42. This shows he trusted God's plan more than his own feelings, even when he was afraid. Another purpose of Jesus' prayers was teaching disciples to pray. Jesus didn't keep his prayer life a secret. He shared it with his friends, the disciples. One day, they asked him to teach them to pray. He said, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. In this simple prayer, known as the Lord's Prayer, Jesus showed them that prayer is talking to God about everything, saying His name is special, asking for what we need, saying sorry for the wrongs we've done, and asking for help to live right. In these ways, Jesus' prayers are a perfect guide for us on how to live close to God, talk to Him about everything, and trust Him with our lives. Another purpose of Jesus' prayers was expression of human emotion and need. Jesus showed us that He experienced human emotions and needs just like any of us. 
Here are a couple of ways he expressed these very human traits. Grief and distress. In a garden called Gethsemane, which is like a quiet park filled with olive trees, Jesus felt a very deep sadness, the kind you feel when your heart is so heavy it's hard to carry. The Bible says, Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. Matthew chapter 26, verse 38. Imagine Jesus, known for healing and helping others, now overwhelmed with a sadness so deep he said it could nearly kill him. He walked a little farther into the garden, fell on his face, praying to God and said, My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. This cup he talked about was like a symbol for the hard task he knew he had to do, die on the cross. He didn't want to suffer, but he was willing to do what God wanted, seeking strength and guidance. In another part of the Bible, Luke chapter 6, verses 12 through 13, it shows Jesus seeking strength and advice. It says, In these days he went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. And when day came, called his disciples and chose from them twelve, whom he named apostles. Before making a big decision, choosing his twelve closest friends who would help him share his teachings, Jesus spent the whole night talking to God. It wasn't just a quick chat, but hours of asking for help and guidance. By praying all night, Jesus showed that he too needed support, wisdom, and strength, and he found it by connecting deeply with God. These stories remind us that Jesus was not just a spiritual figure, but also a person who felt deep emotions and had needs, just like anybody else. He felt overwhelming sadness and sought out quiet places to ask for guidance, showing that it's okay for us to do the same when we're facing tough times or big decisions. Fulfilling human righteousness, living the perfect human life that we could not. When we dive into the stories and teachings of the Bible, we find that Jesus did not just live an exemplary life. He lived the perfect human life, fulfilling all righteousness. This means he lived in complete obedience and submission to God, his Father, something that we find hard to do every day. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son, Though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 7 through 8. This was how Jesus, even though he was God's son, learned to obey through the things he suffered. His prayers were not just whispers in the quiet, but passionate pleas filled with real tears. Yet, he always obeyed, no matter what it cost him. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 adds another layer to this by saying, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus did not just obey when it was easy. He obeyed to the point of dying a painful and humiliating death on the cross. His life was not a series of easy choices. It was a constant submission to God's will, even when that will led him to the cross. What's truly remarkable about Jesus' life is that he was fully human like us, with the same feelings, the same temptations, and the same pains. Yet unlike us, he never failed in his obedience and submission. Every action, every word, and every thought was in perfect alignment with what God wanted. He didn't live for himself, but for God and for us. Jesus' perfect life is significant because it did something extraordinary for us. Where we fail to be righteous, his life offers us a chance to be seen as righteous before God. It's like he took the test of life and scored 100% on behalf of humanity. So, when we believe in him, it's as if his perfect score gets put on our record. Imagine trying to follow a recipe perfectly without making a single mistake. For us, that's impossible. We might mix the wrong ingredients or measure incorrectly or overcook the meal. But Jesus in the kitchen of life followed God's recipe without error. He lived the life we were supposed to live and offered us the reward as if we did it ourselves. By understanding Jesus' perfect obedience and submission, we can appreciate the incredible gift that is offered to us through faith in Him. It's a gift that encourages us not because we can earn it, but because it's freely given, a testament to the perfect life He lived on our behalf. 
the importance of prayer in Jesus' life. In the life of Jesus, prayer wasn't just something he did out of religious duty or as a public display. It was a natural and essential as breathing a lifeline to his Father, maintaining communion with the Father. Prayer for Jesus was about staying connected. It was like the unbreakable bond between a child and a parent. Even though Jesus was God's son, he still talked with God, showing us that he depended on his connection for strength and guidance. This tells us something powerful about prayer. It's not about asking for stuff. It's about keeping our relationship with God fresh and alive. Look at what happened right after Jesus was baptized. And when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened. Luke chapter 3, verse 21. In this moment, heaven itself seemed to reach down, affirming this deep relationship. Jesus was in constant touch with his Father, and it was during these conversations that some incredible things happened. Decisions were made, strength was given, and love was shared. An act of love and trust within the Trinity. Prayer was also an act of love and trust within the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Jesus, even being God, expressed his trust in the Father through prayer. For example, when he was about to raise Lazarus from the dead, he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. John chapter 11, verses 41 through 42. Thank you wasn't for show. It was the Son speaking to the Father, confident that he was heard, an intimate exchange of trust and love. This shows us the heart of prayer. It's about trust. When we pray, we're stepping into that circle of love and trust that's been there since before time. We're saying to God, I rely on you, I trust you, just like Jesus did. Finally, prayer was how Jesus fully embraced being human. The incarnation is a fancy word for God becoming a man in Jesus. This wasn't just God putting on a human suit. He became fully one of us, and part of being human is recognizing we're not all powerful. We need help. We need God. Jesus showed this when life got hard. Before he was arrested, he went to pray in a garden called Gethsemane. He was deeply troubled about what he was about to face, death on a cross. He prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Luke chapter 22, verse 42. Here, he's wrestling, showing us it's okay to bring our deepest fears to God, but also showing us that ultimately prayer is about saying, God, I trust your way more than mine. So, prayer in Jesus' life, it was his way of sticking close to God, showing trust and love within God's family and fully living out his human life with all its ups and downs. When we pray, we're following in Jesus' footsteps, getting to know God up close and personal, trusting Him with our lives, and embracing what it means to be truly human, just like Jesus did. Christ's intercessory role. Jesus praying for others. Specifically, in the book of John, chapter 17, verses 9 to 23, we find a really touching moment when Jesus, who is called God's Son, talks to His Father on behalf of His friends which includes not just the disciples with him then, but all of us who would ever believe in him. He prays for their protection, their joy, their unity, and that they would be set apart and pure in the truth of God's word. Jesus says, I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those who have given me, for they are yours. John chapter 17, verse 9. This shows us that Jesus had a special concern for his followers. He knew the challenges they would face in the world and asked God to look out for them. But he doesn't stop there. He also prays for all the people who believe in him through the message of the disciples. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. John chapter 17, verse 20. That means Jesus thought about each of us way back then. He asked his Father that we all might be one, just as he and the Father are one. It's like he wanted everyone to be in the same family, united, working together in love. The role of Jesus as mediator between God and humans. In another part of the Bible, in the first letter that Paul writes to Timothy, chapter 2, verse 5, we get a clear explanation of a big job that Jesus has. It says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. Now, 
A mediator is like a bridge or someone who stands in the middle to help two other people understand each other and work things out. Before Jesus, people were separated from God because of their wrongdoings or sins. Jesus came to fix that gap. He lived a perfect life, then died for our sins and rose again, showing that He has the power over sin and death. By doing this, He became the one and only go-between for us and God. When we mess up or do things we're not supposed to do, Jesus is there to speak to God on our behalf. It's as if He's saying, I've got this person covered, Father. I've paid the price for their mistakes. This is an amazing thing because it means we can go straight to God through Jesus. We don't need any other person or thing to talk to God for us. Jesus is our direct line to Him. When we pray, we can pray in Jesus' name, and He will speak for us, making sure that we stay connected with God. So, in simple terms, Jesus cares so deeply for us that He talks to God about our needs, our protection, and our unity with each other and with Him. And as our mediator, He's the reason we can have a personal relationship with God at all. He stands in the middle, ensuring that despite our flaws, we can still be close to God. Prayer as a means of fulfilling His mission Prayer is like a secret meeting place where we sit down with God to talk about everything on our hearts, including the big job He has for us. It's where we get the strength to do things that seem too big for us, choose the right friends to help us, and even do amazing things that show everyone how great God is. Strengthening for Tasks Imagine being so stressed and worried that you sweat like it's raining from your forehead. That's how Jesus felt one night. He knew he had to go through something super tough. So what did he do? He didn't just try to be brave by himself. He prayed. And when he did, an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. The Bible tells us this in Luke chapter 22, verse 43, saying, And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. This shows us that when we have big jobs to do, we can pray like Jesus did. And God can send us help, just like a coach giving a pep talk to a player who's about to make the winning goal. Choosing Disciples Now, picking your team is super important. You want friends who will stick with you through thick and thin. Jesus had a big decision to make when choosing his disciples. These were the men who would carry on his work after he was gone. So, he didn't just pick any Joe or Bob. He spent a whole night talking to God about it. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 6, verses 12 through 13, And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve whom also he named apostles. Jesus' all night with God was his way of making sure he had the right crew. When we have big choices to make, like picking our friends or making a team, we can hit the pause button and talk to God about it just like Jesus did. Glorifying the Father through miracles. Then, there are those moments when you need something huge to happen, like a real-life miracle. When Jesus was about to bring his friend Lazarus back from being dead, he didn't just snap his fingers. First, he talked to God. He thanked God for always listening to him which was like a son giving a shout out to his dad for always being there. This is what he said in John chapter 11, verses 41 through 42. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Jesus showed us that even when we're about to do something amazing, it's not about showing off our skills, but about showing off God's goodness and love. He talked to God first to make it clear that the awesome stuff that was about to happen was thanks to God, not just to Him. So, prayer is not just about asking for stuff. It's about getting ready to do great things, making smart choices, and giving God credit for the awesome things He does through us. It's like a superpower hotline that's always open, no matter what. In our journey to understand why Jesus, who is acknowledged as God, prayed to God, we've unpacked some vital points. Let's recap. Firstly, we touched on the nature of Jesus as both fully divine and fully human. This dual nature is essential in comprehending the reasons behind his prayers. As God, Jesus is the second person of the Trinity, but as a man, he lived within the limitations of humanity. Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. Secondly, 
we explored the concept of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Three distinct persons, but one in essence. Jesus communicated with God the Father, showing us the perfect relationship within the Godhead. John chapter 10, verse 30. Now, the significance of Jesus' prayers is extensive. They revealed His trust in God the Father, modeling reliance on God's wisdom and strength, even in the face of challenges. His prayers, such as the one in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Luke chapter 22, verse 42. Show His submission to God's will, providing insight into His mission to redeem humanity. Moreover, Jesus' prayer served as an intimate glimpse into His ministry. He prayed for His disciples and for all believers, asking for unity and protection. John chapter 17, verses 20 through 23. This reflects His role as an intercessor and reveals the depth of His love and commitment to His mission. Inviting you to reflect on Jesus' example and consider the role of prayer in your own life, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Luke chapter 5, verse 16. If Jesus, the Son of God, saw the need to pray, how much more do we, His followers, need to cultivate a life of prayer? His example isn't just a ritual to follow. It's an invitation to foster a personal relationship with God, where we can lay down our burdens and find guidance and comfort. In the stillness of our moments with God, remember that prayer is a gift, a dialogue, and a peace offering that you're welcome to participate in. As you reflect on the life of Jesus, Consider how your own prayer life aligns with His example. May His life inspire you to seek God earnestly, to listen and to speak, to ask and to submit. And through this, may you come to know the profound love and presence of God in your daily walk. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in humble adoration, acknowledging your infinite wisdom and the depth of your love, which often surpasses human understanding as we contemplate the life of Jesus, your Son and our Savior, we find ourselves pondering the mystery of His prayers to you. Lord, we recognize that in Jesus' prayers, we see the perfect reflection of humility and dependence. Just as He looked to you, we too lift our eyes and hearts in prayer, seeking guidance, strength, and a closer relationship with you. In the moments when we struggle to understand the divine complexities, we ask for a simple childlike faith that trusts in your goodness and your plan. Teach us, O oh God, to emulate Jesus in his prayerful attitude, knowing that even as he, being God, bowed in communion with you, we are invited into that sacred space of conversation and intimacy with you. Through his example, may we understand the importance of prayer as a means to express our love, our needs, and our gratitude. In our daily lives, as we face our own trials and joys, let us remember Jesus' example that in every moment, whether of triumph or trial, we should turn to you in prayer, just as he did. Let his life remind us that in our weaknesses, we find your strength. In our questions, we find your wisdom. And in our solitude, we find your comforting presence. Bless us with the peace that comes from knowing you are always within reach, listening to the whispered longings of our hearts. Strengthen us with the same spirit that was in Christ Jesus, that in every circumstance we may find the courage to say, Not my will, but yours be done. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Part 5 In the quiet moments of contemplation, have you ever pondered on the mystery of Jesus seeking God?